And turning to local news, a special opportunity was presented for students in the Art Academy at College Park School earlier this week. It gave them a unique way to engage with students of diverse backgrounds and express themselves creatively. Here's Shelby Clark with more in this week's Beyond the Classroom. Two guest artists were invited in to show these students some new artistic techniques. I am teaching them some jewelry skills, so I'm teaching them some basics of working with jewelry, how to put different pieces together, what the different tools do, and what some of the different findings are. Today we're actually working with polymer clay, and it's new for me too, so it's a new medium um, that I thought the students would really get into. Both Beth and Brandy have a passion for teaching young minds how to express themselves creatively. They believe that getting involved with students in the art community will show them real-life examples of how creatives are making it work in future careers. It's the whole feeling of giving is what I'm trying to teach them is, and it's the perfect season to do this, um, because giving just feels so much richer than receiving. Um, and every class we come in and we make space. We make space and it's one of the things we close our eyes and think about the feeling of giving. Yeah, actually they've all come to the table with lots of amazing ideas and designs and um, yeah, they're just being super creative about different shapes and ways to put things together. Many activities were on the agenda like photography, drawing, making jewelry out of clay and much more. Art Academy is highly recommended to other students who may want to try it out. Well, um, we went in the library upstairs and we got to learn photography and we got to take pictures and go outside and do photography like that. It's been really fun. I'm making a little potato sitting on a couch. He's a couch potato. <laughs> um, I liked when we went out into the field and we got to trace all of our hands, so we have all of our hands imprinted in one book. We've been learning how to use other mediums like markers, pencil crayons, um, and we've been learning how to, like, how to do art together. And that's it in this week's Beyond the Classroom. At Lakeland College, our students go beyond the classroom for immersive, hands-on learning experiences. It's about experiencing the real world because the real world doesn't wait, and neither do we. And ahead of the holidays, the Lloydminster RCMP are hosting a public engagement event this week. I'm joined today by Constable Melanie Flynn with the Lloydminster RCMP. We're here to talk about the Coffee with a Cop event that's taking place on December 16th, this Friday. It's going to be happening at 11 o'clock at the West End Starbucks. So, Melanie, is this just an opportunity for uh, people, uh, the general public uh, residents here in Lloydminster to uh, connect and ask questions with the RCMP? Yeah, the so the Lloydminster RCMP just wanted to host something during this uh uh, busy Christmas season to engage with uh, the public and uh, we decided the West End Starbucks would be a good spot because that's where we see a lot of traffic of uh, shoppers so yeah you can swing by um, 11 a 11 a.m. when we're starting um, and RCMP will be present there and we'll have some you know information some materials um, some you know, handouts and just for generalized questions and concerns. We just want to uh, meet up with uh, members of the public and hear what they have to say this um, for RCMP. So why is it important for the Lloydminster RCMP to host events like this to be able to interact with the community and build uh, relationships with residents? Well, community engagement strategies are always a big part of um community policing, right? So we want um, all of our, uh, even next year, like our strategic planning to align with what the public um, have concerns for, or what uh, the public have input on. Um, so we're always looking for opportunities to engage with uh, our community. Is this something that the RCMP has hosted in the past or is this a new idea? No, we see RCMP detachments all across Canada um engaging with communities in that way it's just mm -hmm. co cops like coffee <laughs> and uh you know it's a good it's a good way to um kind of cut the tension i guess for uh members of the public to sit down and have a 
conversation with a cop. All right. Well, hopefully there is a good turnout. The event's taking place at Starbucks on the West End this Friday, December 16th at 11 a.m. Coffee with the Cop. Get out there and ask your questions uh, to the RCMP. Melanie, thank you for your time. That's right. We hope to see you there. Into the world of curling, over a hundred students had the chance earlier this week to learn from curling athletes who have won not only multiple briars, but also an Olympic gold medal. Adel Ahmed has the story. The scenes at the Lloydminster Golf and Curling Center Monday night. Young curlers getting together to learn from some of the best curling athletes in the nation in Team Botcher. I think it helps all of us a lot and it just like... We get so much like more experience and more so much more insight on other things to help us to curl and be better. When you let it go, just like Brett said, a little bit more rotation. Over 100 Keene High School students attended the curling session. As part of a collaboration with Aztec Safety, Team Botcher graciously took their time, providing curling knowledge to the youth and answering any questions they had for them. This sport has given the four of us um, everything and then some. So this is our chance to give back to a younger generation, uh, to teach them a little bit about the sport we love. Um, and we have a platform and an opportunity to do that. So when that opportunity comes up, we, we jump all over it any chance we get. Ah, it's Pierre. Are you the skip? Nope. What position do you play? I'm the lead. You're the lead? Yep. <laughs> it's safe to say that Team Bodger is impressed with the next generation of curlers out in the border city. Adil Ahmed, Primetime Local Sports. And now it's time for us to check in with Shelby Clark another time for an extended look at weather. so much again there Mr. Jace Mackey. Yes, now taking another extended look at your weather forecast. We will be starting off with our central zone of the provinces and as you can see we are looking at those uh, single digit temperatures. Very nice to see. We're even warming up from what we were looking at yesterday. Uh, most spots around minus three, minus four degrees. Seeing that minus six in most with Red Deer, Edson and Jasper. As we go a bit higher up to Athabasca and Cold Lake, they are slightly cooler with that minus seven, minus nine, but you know still underneath that minus ten mark so that's really nice to see as we are kind of warming up for today and catching a nice break from that cold snap. So to go over to our Saskatchewan side, uh, they are looking slightly cooler compared to the Alberta side. Uh, most spots are still at those single digits with that minus 7 and minus 9 degrees over on the Saskatchewan side here with uh, Prince Albert and Meadow Lake. But as we go up at Lord and Melfort and Saskatoon, they have been hitting those double digits, looking at minus 10 and seeing minus 15 in Melfort. So looking slightly cooler in those areas. Now as we go over to our northern zone, they have slightly warmed up as well compared to yesterday. But as we go a bit higher to Stony Rapids and Uranium City, uh, not too not too warm in those spots. Minus 17 and minus 22 even in Uranium City. So definitely seeing some uh, cool down conditions compared to the rest. Minus 10 and 11 in most spots over on our uh, Saskatchewan side in our northern area. So go over to Flum Flon. They are seeing the warmest with that minus 7 at that single digit. And going back to Alberta side here, they are uh, seeing too much uh, warmer conditions compared to yesterday, kind of like what we are seeing in our central area. Uh, Slave Lake is looking the warmest with that minus 6, and then we start to cool down from there. Minus 10 for Peace River and Fort McMurray. Grand Prairie is seeing minus 13, so definitely have dropped. Uh, Grand Prairie was actually seeing pretty good temperatures uh, yesterday. And if we go a bit higher to high level in Fort Chippewan, they are looking the coolest with that minus 14 and minus 18, so a couple uh, degrees off from that minus 20 mark. So definitely looking a lot more cool down in our northern zone. Going over to our southern zone now, however, they are uh, matching with us in our central zone. They are seeing those single digits in all their spots, especially on the Alberta side. Uh, minus four for Calgary and Medicine Hat, while there's minus five up in Coronation. The rest with Lethbridge and Banff looking at that minus seven, minus eight. So definitely looking still warm for today. And we go over to our Saskatchewan side, and uh, some spots are looking slightly cooler by a few degrees. Seeing minus seven, uh, six to eight degrees in the rest with Estevan, Yorkton, and Kindersley. The ones in the center here are looking at those double digits digits with minus 10, 12, and minus 13 over in Regina. So slightly cooler, but you know, still seeing those mid-teen uh, temperatures. So not as bad as we've uh, seen in the past. Looking at some overnight temperatures that we will be expecting for tonight heading into Thursday. Uh, we will be looking at some warmer evening lows for sure tonight in surrounding areas. Not hitting those minus 20s just yet. 
Isle of Cross and Meadow Lake will be expecting just a degree off there, while the rest will be seeing a low of minus 17 and minus 18 degrees for tonight. But, however, without that uh, wind chill, we will be seeing past that minus 20 mark, probably closer to minus 25 for these spots as well, as we will be, uh, of course, expecting some slight winds. So just be prepared. It still will cool down quite a bit, although it is, uh, for temperature-wise, it is looking slightly warmer from what we are used to. Looking at our hourly forecast for us here in the Border City for tomorrow, we will be starting off slightly warmer with that minus 10 to minus 12 degrees with around 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. But as we go through the day, we will cool down, but only by a couple degrees, which will be nice. We will be uh, getting to the coolest with around minus 14 by the time we get to the evening tomorrow. So it will definitely be a jacket wearing kind of day. So make sure you are layering up just in case. But of course, you know, this is still a nice break, especially here in the December month. We could be getting worse. Now looking at our next few days here, we are going to be looking at minus 12 as we are looking at for tomorrow. Then get ready because we will be, even though we will be warming up Friday, we will be looking at a high chance of some flurries for Friday and Saturday. So although we will warm up for a weekend, get ready because we will be seeing some uh, extra snowfall coming up. So make sure to have your shovels ready. And even after that, we will be hitting those minus 20s. So we were getting kind of spoiled here lately. So make sure you are grateful uh, taking advantage of the outside because we will be dropping low uh, next week. That's all I have for now. Our Jace Mackey will have our news coming up after the break. our series of financial literacy panels with Synergy Credit Union. Once again, I have Amberly and Brianna here with me today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thanks for having us, Stacey. Okay, now today we're gonna to talk about credit scores. This is a big deal for a lot of people. So we'll start by asking, what is a credit score? Credit scores are used by financial institutions to weigh the level of risk. Uh, credit card companies also use them, again, to weigh the level of risk. Everyone starts out with a score of zero and then they build up their score from there based on their spending and saving behavior. Okay, so what does the score mean? Can you explain to me what a credit score means? Yeah, so a credit score ranges from anywhere between 350 all the way up to 800. Um, what this means is a low score could be anything 550 below. Um, the middle range would be about 550 to 720, and a prime score is anywhere between 720 and above. Um, so really what that means is like if you're in the prime area, 720 and above, that's where you're most likely to be approved for new loans or mortgages um, and get the best interest rates. Kind of that middle range, you still may be approved, but you might have a higher interest rate just as it means it's that the bank or credit union is taking on a higher risk. Um, and a low score means that you may, may not end up being approved. Um, really anything below 600 may make it harder to borrow things for, um, to, for a purchase such as a house or a car. Okay. And uh, how are credit scores calculated? Uh, credit scores are calculated based on a variety of different components. So starting with your payment history, making those payments on time boosts your credit score. Your capacity, so how much of your available credit that you're using. If you're always maxing out that credit card, that's gonna hurt your credit score. It's best to just pay it all off and keep it under that maxed out rate. Um, the less credit you use, the better. Uh, also, your length of credit, so a long history of good credit raises your score, so time is a factor here. New credit, opening several new accounts or having several new credit purchases can actually harm your score. Um, try not to, try to be serious about your purchase before you have your credit score pulled. Uh, and then also another thing that people don't think about is having a good mix of credit. So okay. there, there are different types of credit that we use. There's revolving credit, so that's your credit card that you don't have to apply for every time. You can reuse it, pay it off, reuse it. And then there is your, your fixed credit or your installment loans that you can just pay off at um, with, a, with a payment monthly or bi-weekly, however works for you. But having a mix of those types of credit shows and builds your, uh, builds your credit. Okay, and uh, how do you keep track of the score? What's the best way to do that? I see all kinds of ads saying, check your credit score here, but what's the best way to do that? Um, so it's definitely really important to make sure that you're always on top of your score and checking it. Um, but really the best way to do it is 
you are able to request a free report from both Equifax and TransUnion once a year. Um, this will give you more than just your score. It'll tell you everything that's reporting to your credit. Um, so you can take a look through it to check for any discrepancies or if anything doesn't look like something that you've done, um, you'll want to check that out. Um, and because you can get a free report from both of the companies, we recommend spacing it out so you can get one about every six months. Okay. And uh what influences your credit score? I know people think that they can just go and spend all these different things and, and hey, it's almost like free money, but there has to be obviously some things that, that will influence that score. So can you tell me about those? It's exactly what you said. It's behavior influence. So your spending behavior creates your credit. Uh, so any late payments, that reflects poorly, brings down that score. Uh, closed accounts due to repayment issues, it plummets your score and they don't go away. You have to get those things paid off. Um, account openings, so lots of account openings at several furniture stores. Maybe be very serious about purchasing the furniture you need versus having accounts open at every furniture store or, or uh, credit card in town. Uh, account closings, account closings due to delinquencies. So like I said before, if you have a balance that you are just ignoring and you're not gonna pay and they've closed your account, that's gonna bring your score down. Um, again, a mix of credit. So if you only have credit cards, we can't see how you use other types of credit. So right. that doesn't help build, um, build your score there. And then again, stressing the number of inquiries, be serious about your purchases. When you go car shopping, shop for the car, but also be mindful of the credit inquiries. Okay, and what are the best practices uh, when dealing with, with credit scores? Um, so a few here, just when you're wanting to keep your score high and in that prime range, uh, make sure that you make your payments on or before the due dates. Uh, those are probably one of the biggest influences in um, your credit score. So just making sure that they're always on time. Um, space out your credit inquiries. So again, as we mentioned earlier, um, getting those free reports and just making sure that you space them out. And also, if you notice something on your report is incorrect, it's important to notify the reporting company as soon as possible to get it corrected. And again, if you have something negative on your on your sorry, credit history, ignoring it won't make it go away. So it's important to get in contact with the provider as soon as possible and make arrangements to pay it. Okay, well, this is all very good information and I know credit is something that confuses a lot of people. If anybody's looking for more information, what's the best way to get in touch with the branch? Um, best way would be to uh, either come into any one of our branches or give us a call or go to our website at synergycu.ca. Okay, great. Well, thanks ladies for joining me today. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. I am so pleased to be joined today by Raul Medon. Raul, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about your latest album. Well, thank you for having me. Well, let's talk about Eclectic Adventurist. It's an amazing album and something really kind of different for you. Is that correct? Absolutely. It's the first album that I do that it doesn't have vocals on it. Um, I've always been very interested in playing the guitar at, you know, at a high level, and I've always admired uh, great guitar players. So the pandemic gave me a chance to do, some, to do this album, which I've been thinking about for a long time. Now, you have a number of different uh, players on this as well. How did you decide who was going to help you out with this? I called people, and uh, they said yes. That's basically... <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the way I did it. You know, people that I knew um, on some level, you know, some some of the people I had known well and played with some people, you know, I worked with once and I really liked their playing and I called them, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, people that I knew and and um, that's basically how I did and, and And people that had a individual style, something unique about their playing, that that was the other sort of criteria. So why do you think it, it took so long for you to get to the point where you could make this album? Or was it just something that you, you know, didn't really think about? Uh, you wanted to do the other albums, you know, with vocals and such uh, until the pandemic? Or is this something you had been thinking about for a while? It's something that I had been thinking about. Um, I don't know if I felt ready. It also, there was the, the thing of always being on tour and not having the time to put it together. And of course, the pandemic uh, took away all the excuses. So... <laughs> I just, 
I just did it. Um, but it was it was something that I that I had been thinking for for a long time. Well, now that things are, you know, almost back to normal, I guess, for a lot of people, will you also be doing a large scale tour supporting this as well? Or have you done some shows already? I've done some, but it's it's kind of hard to do a tour with all these guys, actually. Uh, probably won't be a tour with all the guys on it. It would be an incredible uh, task to get all of them together for a tour. I, it, it would, I think that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've had such an amazing career, uh, you know, including the Grammy nominations and working with some amazing people. Uh, what's next for you now? Or do you or do you get to just maybe sit back and, and chill out for a little bit? Or is that not how you how you operate? I'm always working on stuff. Um, I'm already working on songs for the next album. Um, I'm uh, in the process of writing a book as well. So that's I'm hoping to get to that now that I'm off the road. I was on a two month road tour, so that was really a long time, and I'm hoping to kind of do some other things, but I'm always working on stuff at home um so that's I have a rec- you know full function recording studio, so you know there's always stuff going on. Do you think that this will be the only album that you do this way, Raul? Or do you no. think that, that there'll be more of, of this I'm thinking type of future? About, I'm thinking about volume two already. <laughs> what has the response been? It's been really surprising, you know. Um, I mean, I always knew and know that, you know, singing is is a, gives you a wider audience. You know, there are some people that just can't approach instrumental music but uh, it's been really surprising it's the kind of record i think that people can sort of have and and put on and it's it can be background music it can be music to go to sleep to i don't really care how people <laughs> use it um you know and and uh and i think some people uh, were surprised by it i don't think some people knew that i was um this kind of guitar player well, it is absolutely amazing to listen to and, and a great Christmas gift. Now, you know, now is this the time of year. If you want uh, to give somebody a gift, why not go for the album? So if people are looking for more information as to how to find out more about you or uh, purchase the album, what is the best way to, I guess, to find you in, all in one in one location? Well, uh, you can go to the website, Um The album is on uh, Spotify, of course, and, and all that. But uh, if you want to buy a CD, you need to buy it directly from from us. Um, so you go to RaulMedone.com and you can buy a CD that way. Of course, you can get the uh, the digital version of it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's I think that's that's the way to do it. And, and as you know, as I you know, I I, I the uh, the guitar the players on it are just amazing i mean i've got mike's turn i've got romero lubambo i've got jonathan kreisberg i've got um uh stefan rumbel i got dean parks a great studio session la guitar player just just some amazing players so i think people will will uh, enjoy it. there's something something there for for everybody there's you know, it's a jazz sort of leaning album, but it's not necessarily a strict jazz album. It's all original compositions. Well, as I said, it is an amazing album. So thank you again for taking the time to speak with us. And good luck. We'll be looking forward to volume two. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, that's our newscast for this uh, Wednesday night. Thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you again tomorrow.